Good evening and welcome to this week's meeting of the Norton Board of Selectmen. Today is Thursday, May 10th, <coughs> Excuse me. 2018. Let the records show that all members are present, along with Town Manager Michael Units. Pledge of Allegiance, please. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> you folks in the back of the room, it's your, you're ordered to drag her up here. <laughs> She's not here yet. Okay. For those of you at home, we'll be making a presentation shortly. Okay. Um, you might as well get through some of these licenses and permits. Um, why don't you take this, Bob, under number one? No, uh, number one. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, we have a application a reform of vote taken on April 26, 2018, for a disabled veteran, Corporal William F. Reardon, Chapter 57, taught mass permission to conduct the annual get me not drive in Norton held on August 25th to, and August 26th 2018 motion do we have a second second okay. this is just to reaffirm just to reaffirm that we uh, <coughs> the vote we already took so all those in favor aye, aye. opposed no, it's unanimous Hi, Carol. Hi, Carol. Hey. <laughs> We've been waiting for you. Come on up. Come on. I got handcuffs. You got to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have to go to Carol, we're very proud to recognize you in our town report this year. Sorry. And I know you've been bad mouthing me about not giving out town reports. The reason was. No, I haven't been bad. <laughs> <laughs> No, there you I, are. No, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! God. And rightfully so. By the way, you can you can blame your daughter Carol for anything that you don't like. I think your family's coming in also. <laughs> but we're very proud to dedicate this town report to you. And with your permission, I'm going to give the information that Carol gave to us. Your daughter Carol. Carol A. Sassi, daughter of Albert and Mary Pisano, was born in Boston, Massachusetts, on December 9, 1938. A resident of Norton since 1970, Carol was educated in the Hyde Park schools. She was an active participant in the Boston Crusaders and marched for the Drums and Bugle Corps. What did you play? I didn't. I was, no. in, the <laughs> I was in the public. <laughs> she had maintained many friendships from her Crusader days and attends the annual Crusader luncheon to be held in the summertime. Carol moved to Norton and married Nicholas and Tassi Jr. and Tassi Jr. on February 4th, 1970. 14. 14. <laughs> 1970. Enjoyed many years of marriage until his passing in 1993. Together they had three children, Joe, Carol, and Chris, whom all reside in Norton. Carol's worked for the town of Norton as the Huckman Secretary, Office Administrator, since 1982. He must be one of the older, one of the longest, the longest term in town? Probably. <laughs> Not she, really. She I think the school department maybe. Yeah, right? She has worn many hats while doing her job. And her knowledge and expertise of town affairs has been an asset to all. Her dedication to the town of Norton for the past 35 years and counting is unwavering. She's an active parishioner in the, of St. Mary's Norton Parish. Oh, hi there. <laughs> <laughs> Many special occasions have been celebrated at the St. Mary's Church in Norton. In the past, has enjoyed. Many friendships over the years. She enjoys catching up with friends while going out to eat, watching a movie, and seeing a show. Carol has many things to be proud of, but one of her greatest accomplishments is being so dedicated to her family. <clears throat> she is a matriarch of the Anastasi family. In addition to being the beloved mother of three children, she has grandmother Kendra, Nicholas, and Tywa, and great-grandmother to Alana. Mm -hmm. They fondly call her Mimi, which she enjoys most of spending, spending time with her friend, friends or family, whether it be sitting at the table or sharing a meal, shopping, or taking day trips to the beach. Family is what is most important to her, and she looks forward to making many memories, more memories with her children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Carol, congratulations.
Yeah. As you can see, a lot of you talented you fellow talent employees are here. We'd like to have you. To have these also. <laughs> so you can find someone to help. And also, I'd like to give you a copy of the town report, which you can start passing out tomorrow. It's <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll start passing them anyway. We have a copy of your report. Congratulations. Thanks for coming. We knew we'd have to drag you up here. So. <laughs> With the help of your family, we were able to pull that off. So. Don't worry, I'll come and I'll do the next. <laughs> yeah, you can take the rest of the night off. Thank you, Thank you Carol. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. And daughter Carol, thanks for bringing her tonight, okay? Thank you all for coming. <laughs> oh, this is such a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, look what you started out here. Look what you started. Look. Look at all this. Is this my Am I ready to leave? Yes, you have you have permission to leave now. I meant do I still have a job? Oh yeah. No, you're <laughs> This is Carol. This is Carol. This is not a retirement party. We're dedicating the town report to you. I believe, but I just Yeah, Carol. It's all good. Yeah, Carol. Okay. Where were we? We took a vote on. <laughs> we had to. Um, uh, to reaffirm the vote. We had to uh, get her in and out real fast because I was afraid she'd run out of here. So, job well done by our family to get her in here. Okay. Number two. Number two, we have an application for Edward J. Brault for Memorial Day Parade to be held Monday, May 28, 2018. Start off time 10 a.m., approximately to 11.30 a.m. Okay, this is an annual event this year. Uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, this year we're going to uh, go down to the end of Pine Street. We're going to bypass the, uh, the uh, common because we've got that pretty much upside down right now. Meet at the Trent Memorial, and then we'll go back to the school from there. So. Just one extra step we, we won't be taking this year. Anyone have any questions? Nope. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. Who seconded that, just in case? Oh, the secretary Second. seconded the minister. You did? Mr. Chairman, we have an application for Rebecca Hunt for a one-day beer and wine liquor license to be utilized at the Everett Atlanta Park Saturday, June 2nd, 2018, from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. for a private party. Second. Here's we have a motion and second. It appears everything's in order. Mm -hmm. So, uh, anyone have any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, seeing none, um, take a roll call. Mr. Flaherty? Yes. Mr. Steele? Yes. Mr. Selva? Yes. Mr. Bramwell? I vote yes. And I will vote yes also. It's unanimous. Mr. Selva? Mr. Chairman, we have an application for a Holly. Quickly, on the application, it doesn't indicate beer and wine or alcohol, so. I want to make sure that you add that to it. But it was in the motion, but <clears throat> I noticed that the application doesn't indicate it. Hmm. I don't have a copy of that. Right should have not said, should have not said liquor. That would have shown that it's it should be, it just says the, wine, it just says dispenser. It looks like most of them just say dispenser. Yeah. I'll make sure we put it on. We'll make sure we add that to it. <clears throat> okay. Um. sorry. No, no, that's, that's that's a good point. So it's wine, wine and uh, beer, and wine. Oh, beer and wine. Okay, we'll make sure we add that. <coughs> <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, we have an application for Holly Fitzgerald for one day all alcohol liquor license to be utilized at the Everland Park Saturday, June twenty third, two thousand eighteen, from four p.m. to eight p.m. for a private party. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, that says dispensed also, Mr. Bramwell, right? But it's also circles at the top. All, all alcohol. alcohol. All alcohol. All alcohol. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? Do you have Mr. Clarity? Yes. Dale? Yes. 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 Salvo? Bramwell? Yes. Bramwell. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, we have an application for Chris in Sanford. The one day all alcohol liquor license to be held at the Everett Leonard Park Sunday, June 24, 2018, from 3 30 p.m. to 6 30 p.m.
p.m. for a private party. Second. <clears throat> Second. Any further discussion? It has been, all these forms, by the way, have been signed off by the various department heads. So. Okay. We have a motion to second. For discussion. Sparty? Yes. Steele? Yes. Salvo? Yes. Mr. Bramwell? Yes. Right, two vote. Mr. Salvo? Mr. Chairman, we have an application for Ralph Brzezuzzi, DBA Fisherman's 3, 411 Old Colony Road, for a live entertainment license, karaoke. Second. Here's the fire inspector and the building inspector signed off. Uh, it's going to be six nights a week. Six. Any questions? Good. Motion a second to approve the request for Fisherman's Three. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. Okay. All we have? Mm -hmm. That's enough. Okay. Under announcements, Mr. Salva, what do you have? Um, Mr. Chairman, I don't have any announcements, and I firmly apologize for the week before last to get out the, uh, to re-announce the um, hazards day that was held last Saturday by the um, Board of Health. Hopefully they had a good turnout <coughs> and um, um, everything went well. But I, I apologize for not readdressing that the week before um, that event. That's all I have. Okay. Mr. Bramwell? I see we have in the packet a uh, notification for Wednesday, May 16th, at the Norton High School Auditorium, an advocacy uh, to advocate for Corey's cause. And Corey was a varsity baseball and football athlete a member of the National Honor Society. Corey had a love for the game of baseball. The baseball diamond was the happiest place on earth for him. His junior year of high school, he suffered a shoulder injury, which required surgery. After surgery, Corey was prescribed opiates for pain and became addicted to his opiate pain medication and eventually be, uh, became addicted to heroin. On July 15, 2013, Corey suffered a heroin overdose, which left him permanently disabled. From Adversity to advocacy, Corey's cause has partnered with the Bristol County DA's office. The schools in Bristol County, Corey and his family together talk to students about the dangers of drugs and offer a message of hope for those who are faced with addiction. So that's Wednesday, May 16th at the Norton High School Auditorium at 6.30 p.m. Mr. Units, yeah, go ahead. I just want to say, so remember we have to keep town meeting moving along because uh, if town meeting gets continued, if we don't finish in one night, it will be that night. So uh, hopefully uh, we accomplish all our business on one night so the event can move forward. Or we'll have to have it the following Monday. Yeah, one or the other. Fortunately, it's in the auditorium. We're, we're in the process. We're, we're probably going to have moving the town meeting to the uh, gymnasium expecting a larger crowd. So the auditorium on Wednesday at 6.30 would probably would be available. Uh, I'm sure there are some people here who would like to go to this, but <coughs> now meeting at 7 o'clock, we'll have to see how long it takes us to finish up our business. Anything else, Mr. Bramwell? Yeah, also in our packet, there's a uh, announcement regarding the Norton Park and Recreations uh, Founders Day 2018, June 16th. Family fun, food, and fireworks. It's from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Henry, L Henry A. Yell School. So it's June 16th at 5 o'clock, Founders Day. Good news. Hopefully the weather will hold up. We had a uh, Side to Trent Memorial motorcycle run scheduled for Saturday. We just canceled today because of the weather. So hopefully this one will be able to it's go supposed ahead. It's supposed to rain? Yeah. Uh, and that's all I have. Um, just a comment on this, Brad. Yeah. Brad um, Bob, <coughs> we know if we still have the banner that we can put up out front like we did previous years. I don't know. We, we can find out if that's possible. We can get that up there again with a new date, maybe. It, was that on this agenda or is that on last week's? Yeah, it's a new business. Oh, it is? To hang the banner. Yep. Oh, sorry. I jumped the gun. Yep. Uh, trying to move things along. <laughs> 
slap me. <laughs> Don't listen to him. I'm listening. I am Don't listening. listening. <clears throat> okay. Mr. Steele, do you have anything? Nothing. Mr. Ford? Just in our packet, or at least in my packet, is the Norton Veterans Council uh, notice of the Memorial Day Parade yep. to be held on Monday, May 28th at 10 a.m. Yep. That's all I have. Okay. Did we already go over that? Did I miss yeah. that? Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. We approved the uh, the permit. Um, and again, we're going to have to be, it's going to be modified this year, but we're not going to use the town common. We can't get we can't get it done that fast. Right. So it's not going to happen. I went to a meeting the other day on North and South Worcester Street, the intersection. I think uh, Brad was there, and a few of us were here. And I was there too, my neighbor. Yes, yes, Peter, you are. Uh, and we uh, we were uh, they were talking about you know how how dangerous the intersection is, and I I totally get that it needs to be done over. I've asked town manager to look into the bushes and the, and the trees on both sides of the street, especially on the Chatway side, the Chatway Pond side, and the the old mill, was it, was it sturdy? Sturdy. Sturdy mill. On the other side, when you pull out and you're looking to your right or to your left, there's a lot of vegetation in the way. And I'm not saying we can make it safe, as safe as it should be, but we can make it safer if we can get some of that stuff taken care of and get some of that brush out of the way. Maybe move that, uh, there's a couple of high, uh, a couple of uh, plants they have at Sturdy that, uh, you know, they're, they're lawn plants. And it should be, they should be uh, probably moved somewhere else just to give everybody a better line of vision until we can fix that intersection. And I did mention the Tom Common. Uh, <clears throat> we have a new uh, account which we're setting up a, uh, a GoFundMe account that we're working on. Uh, Nancy Robbins has been very, very helpful in getting that all pulled together. Um, and uh, hopefully we're going to get that thing online in the next few days. You're going to see some signs going up and that kind of stuff to try to raise more money to get that project done sooner than later. And any money that's left over will be put into an account for future renovations and whatever, whatever needs to be done. Okay, on the new business. We have a proclamation. You ready? I am. <clears throat> we have a proclamation for 2018 Police Week, May 13th to the 19th, 2018. Whereas the Norton Board of Selectmen proclaim the week of May 13th to the 19th, 2018 Police Week as established by President John F. Kennedy in 1962. And whereas the Board of Selectmen call all citizens of Norton, of the town of Norton, to further observe Tuesday, May 15, 2018, as Peace Officers Memorial Day, and whereas the day serves to pay tribute to law enforcement officers who have made the ultimate sacrifice to voice our appreciation for all those who currently serve. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Board of Selectmen, do hereby proclaim May 13th through the 19th as, 2000, as 2018 Police Week as a in the town of Norton to further observe Tuesday, May 15, 2018 as Peace Officers Memorial Day. Chief, you have a dedication coming up? Tuesday. On Tuesday, you want to tell, tell people about it? Uh, good evening. Thank you for the proclamation. Uh, I think it's important for um, you know, the selectmen to make this type of announcement. This year, uh, they have a candlelight vigil down in Washington, D.C., and this year, 316 names of police officers who were killed in the line of duty will be added to the, to the wall down there. 129 were killed in 2017, and another 231 um, from previous years. Um, obviously, the last month has been certainly a, uh, a dangerous and trying month with Sean Gannon being killed in Yarmouth and then Eugene Cole up in Maine. So as you know, we've been building this uh, memorial and we're going to have a dedication of it on Tuesday, which is Law Enforcement Memorial Day. I hope everybody will be able to what time attend. time is it, Chief? 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. <clears throat> okay, next we have Mr. Jeffrey Mann back there to talk about um, General Manager for the support of a proposed new accident at the Xfinity Center. Mr. Mann, how are you? Good. Good evening. How are you? How are you? Thank you for having me. 
Uh, so we're getting close to opening up for our 2018 season. Uh, there's a couple positive things I can definitely share. Uh, after a, an off year last year with only 23 shows, uh, we've rebounded. We're looking at approximately 40 shows this year. Uh, so the show counts back up. It's nice. It, it means there's more acts on the road. We're able to secure more acts, uh, which is a positive for us. Inside the venue, there's a lot of changes going on right now. It's a, it's a full construction zone in there. Uh, Welcome you guys to take a peek around when I'm done. Hopefully it'll be by the, the opening day. It's a, it's a race to finish right now. Um, but overall, we're, we're close to opening up. I don't see any um, dramatic changes with the operation of the venue uh, and with the traffic plan, except for the change to the 140 southbound egress. Uh, and what we're looking to do there is uh, send some of our uh, patrons um, 140 southbound out of our uh, venue. There are patrons that take that. There are Norton residents or people familiar with the area take that, that exit. Uh, there's also 140 southbound traffic that's not affiliated with the Xfinity Center heading down that way as it is. Uh, what we're looking to do is open up a new exit, hopefully relieve some of the pressure for the lots that leads to people uh, staying in one spot for a very, very long time. Uh, we're also convinced that if you look at our stats, where we start seeing uh, fender benders on the road that create even more delays, those tend to happen on the sold out nights and they don't happen in the parking lots, they happen on the road. I think people get frustrated after sitting still for such a long time. They wind up jockeying for position, getting frustrated. Our goal is to get them out of there a little bit quicker so that we can, one, clear our lots certainly, uh, hopefully reduce some of the accidents on the road and basically clear that entire area for all the residents and neighbors that are impacted. Uh, that's our goal with that. Uh, we're confident it can work. Uh, the volume will increase from what you're seeing now, but it won't be a dramatic increase. Our estimates are uh, absolutely perfect flow on a perfectly sold out night. Uh, we're looking at 10% or less of our vehicles heading that way. Uh, what's the percentage right now? I don't know, uh, but it's somewhere probably in that three to 5% range. So while there will be an increase, it's not a a dramatic increase uh, and on a nightly basis the the folks that take that 140 southbound can vary um, I'm out there every night I'll see it some nights are very heavy use some nights are very light use uh, what this will do is just target a group and push them 140 southbound take them out of the traffic plan overall a um, couple of things we're doing to hopefully mitigate this and make sure this works smoothly uh, every vehicle that leaves our property to go this way will be handed a map by my staff. We're going to have a two-sided map, map on one side, some language on the back explaining the situation, explaining that if you follow the directions, it will be your fastest way out, and uh, stressing no U-turns there, which will simply put them right back into the traffic flow and clog everything up. Won't be, won't be uh, uh, successful. We're going to cone off from the Xfinity Center down to approximately the New England ice cream. Uh, we feel that's a long enough stretch to get people moving. Hopefully they see that um, this is the way to go. They've got the map uh, and they head down um, to do the loop. I'm also going to bring in a team. I have a, a team of, we call them guest ambassadors, whose job is simply to focus on the guest experience in the venue. Um, their primary focus is inside the venue once we open. I'm going to bring them in at 4 o'clock, uh, this team. We're going to work. We know which lots will be impacted. I can't say exactly which cars, but I know in general which lots will be impacted by this. Uh, these folks will work those lots from 4 p.m. until they're clear, uh, until the people are inside. Uh, just walking up and down and chatting with people. We've done it before when we've had announcements or a time change or an act change, something along those lines. We've done it. We've walked up and down. We engage the folks. Just let them know what's going on. Uh, there's one lot in particular that 100% will be impacted. They'll be going out that road. Uh, and then there's a couple other lots that could be depending on the traffic flow. So we're going to work as many of those as we can. We'll give them a verbal touch point prior to the show. We'll give them a map after the show. And we're going to add signage along the path from uh, our back lots all the way out, all the way through our neighbor's property and onto 140 southbound. I've also talked to the uh, group of traffic engineers that I work with that design our, our plan. I've asked them to talk to the state about adding some uh, 495 signs on 140 southbound that will hopefully keep the guests moving. They have the map, they see the signs, it reinforces they're heading the right way. Uh, something that I'm not sure of, and, and Chief uh, Clark and I spoke earlier, if those 495 signs aren't a positive for the town of Norton on a regular basis, I will certainly cover those on non-nights. At, at my crew will do that. Um, I'll leave that to a little bit to the Chief's determination and to the traffic engineers. Let them figure out, if, is that a positive for the town? Does it help guide people? Or is it really more event-focused? <coughs> if it is, we will, we will cover them. I'll have a call, call, call picture of the uh, plan just so people at home are clear on what this is about, instead of coming out the main gate, which is what everybody does now, you need to go left, 
toward 495 or you take a right and head toward, toward the center of town. Uh, <coughs> um, the plan is to divert the traffic from the parking lot to the back of the electrical contractors. Correct. Yeah, property, the different exit. So instead of everybody coming out the main exit, there'd be a second uh, egress going out to the right, heading toward the center of town, center north. <coughs> I, I spoke to the police chief, and we, we, when we, took, we when, and Mr. Mann also, we talked about what happens when they hit the lights in the center of town, and there will be police officers there for the first event to see what kind of an impact it's going to have as far as getting people moving through there. It's normally around 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night when all this is happening anyway. A typical show ends at 11. That's pretty standard. It could end 10, 30. They could be a little bit earlier. Uh, we usually know about a week before what, what the anticipated end time is. Uh, if this works well, the goal is, you know, the impact is really 1045 to 1145 is really where the impact should be. Yeah, I mean, it's not like it's in the middle of the daytime. So the, uh, the other thing I'd like to say before I turn over to the other members is, the, you know, last year I thought went much smoother than previous years. Uh, thank you for making that happen. I know the lines of communication between you and all of your neighbors is greatly improved, and we thank you for that also. And I think keeping the open dialogue is important to Norton. I mean, when the, when the facility was built years ago, we always felt like it was a black eye to us because we we're kind of on, it's on the line. You know, we get all the traffic, we get all the noise, we get all the trash, we get all the stuff. And I, I feel like in the last few years that I, the, uh, the culture has changed a bit. And I think the, the uh, cooperation between facility and, and the town of Norton has greatly improved, so I thank you for that. Certainly, I, I appreciate the, both with this board, uh, Mr. Units, Chief Clark, and his team. Uh, I agree, the, the cooperation communication has, has gone very well since I've been here. Uh, I'm coming up on my third anniversary, I think next week. Uh, this will be my fourth season I'm heading into, but uh, I, I've certainly felt a, a positive uh, dialogue. We make sure we meet, uh, Chief and I meet several times a year. We talk frequently. Um, if there's something that I need to do to help uh, the town of Norton, I'm, I'm here. Uh, I, I do recognize, based on where we are, it's a little frustrating. Uh, I can't move us, but I, I am here to be as good a corporate neighbor as I possibly can be and to help in any way. So um, to that end, you mentioned the, the communication with the neighbors. Uh, I have an email blast that goes <coughs> in the morning, started this week, and it'll run through the season. Uh, it started with just my neighbors on Reservoir, and it's expanded to about 200 people. Uh, if anybody's interested, anybody here is interested, let me know. All I do is simply look ahead probably about a two-week time frame and give you some details on what to expect, um, how big the crowd's going to be, what time we're expecting to have uh, uh, the crowds uh, crowds there and roughly how soon we can expect it to be clear at the end of the night we can gauge that based on day of the week demographics um, and um, daily, yeah day of the week and demographics uh, we can we get a pretty good shot of where we're going to be um, people seem to appreciate that the increased uh, communication we've also um, based on last year some of the issues we had with people parking in the wrong spots as well as ways taking people the wrong way um, we did furnish a bunch of signs that were a combination of um, no through traffic on the streets, residents only, police take notice. Uh, we had several out there that were uh, either resident parking only or employee parking only for the businesses, police take notice, violators will be towed. Uh, we set those up. Uh, I've got a couple neighbors who are great who actually set it up and take it down themselves. They keep the sign. Otherwise, the other 12 to 14, I think, my crew goes out in a truck and we set them up at the beginning of the night and we take them down at the end of the night. So uh, if, if that's if more of those are needed, please let me know. We'll, we'll certainly take care of that as well. We're running through our inventory right now to see where we are. Most of them are in good shape. We're going to get a couple more made. Um, but if there's more uh, signage we can do to help, we'll certainly do that. You mentioned, I think it was Mr. Bramwell last year brought this up about what's coming up, future, future events. You mentioned something about maybe putting up some additional signage or trying to do something over there to let people know what's going on? There's a hope. I don't want to I don't want to jump too, too far ahead, um, but there is a hope. I, I We lost our big sign. I don't know if you guys saw the uh, the big sign on 140, the Xfinity Center sign. Yeah, uh, it, was, it was taken down during the March 2nd storm. It was damaged. It, we took a beating on that storm uh, throughout the venue, uh, but that sign came down. When we replaced that sign, we actually reinforced the poles and we added some electrical there. My hope is, now <coughs> it, would be, it would be next year, but I, I have already looked into an LED board as a capital improvement that would run constantly for us, that would give us uh, you know, show today info or upcoming show info. Uh, the other thing we did last year, and actually was, I think it was a recommendation of this board, which wound up being great, uh, we have several VMS, those digital signage boards on the roads. Uh, and what we did is we pulled two of them off the roads on non-show days. We put them back to back at our entrance and uh, and it had um, 
uh, flashing info on upcoming shows, upcoming show dates on that. It's just another way to get the word out to the neighborhood and let them know as much as they can. So we, we, we're happy to do that. Mr. Sullivan? Mr. Chairman, um, Mr. Mann, um, I, know I know in the previous years when Taunton gets out, there's no traffic can turn on Reservoir Street. Um, right after nine, was it something like that? There's no left hand, 140 yeah. southbound, no left hand turn on the reservoir okay. after 930. Okay, I, I understand that. Now, last year I was told by some residents that during the concert they weren't allowed to go out to 140 and take a ride either. Um, From reservoir to one? Directed to go all the way out and around to 140 to get back on to, to go out. They weren't letting them go out either. Is that, you aware of this? That's not part of the plan. Okay. That's, that's not, no, the, the residents leaving reservoir, taking a right onto 140 uh, northbound. In the road section, they were heading in reservoir to go to 140 to take a they right should, to go to the highway. They weren't allowed to go on reservoir street. They should never be, actually, there's no time that that ever doesn't happen. Um, that, that's maybe a hiccup on, on, on our part. I apologize for that. That's certainly, uh, it's part of this design. I, I know there are some, there's going to be some impacts on the neighbors. There's no way to avoid it when you're moving these many vehicles around. And the left-hand turn, I understand, is a little bit of an issue, but it's, it's, it's safety and it's also clearing the place faster. Um, what I've tried to do beyond that is really minimize the impact and really focus on the neighbors the best I can uh, to really limit what their impact is. And that, that shouldn't be happening. I understand it's hard for the officers to turn, you know, determine who's a resident and who's not a resident unless you stop every car and ask for that driver's license. I get that. I understand it's a lot of work, but I was just, like I said, I was just informed that residents were leaving during the day, even with those signs up, that they weren't allowed to go out to reservoirs. I, I'd, be, I'd be happy to give you my cell number, the whole board, if, if something like that comes up. One of the real nice things about the email blast that I've done is my understanding was years past, a resident would get upset, would complain to town hall, either this one or Mansfield, it would filter to the police chiefs, it would filter to Xfinity, and you're talking about a four or five day turnaround. I'm getting text messages now at 4.30 in the afternoon saying this isn't right. Um, the great thing is I'm able to fix it in 10 or 15 minutes and write it right then. Uh, so I, I appreciate the residents in, in Reservoir that have embraced it and helped me be a little bit better too. Uh, I'd be happy to give you my cell number. If something like that happens, that's not part of the plan. That's not, not correct. Problem. I'm not, I'm not, you know, no, I, I want to correct. I, get whatever I can do to limit the stuff you on the ask neighbors. Now before you start, then ask in the middle of the season. Absolutely, that that is not part of the plan. That should correct. not be part of the plan. I think what was happening nine thirty ten o'clock last year, the left hand turn coming off line of five was blocked. We, ended, we all agreed to that. Correct. I think what he's referring to is when they came up to the end of the res, and they wanted to take a right hand turn. That it should be allowed. I'm not they, sure if they can take a left hand turn. They can take a right hand turn. They can't take a left hand turn between 9:30 and the L time. But then again, that's typically a three or four lane solid going northbound. So getting somebody block, across there would be, be there right. um, No, but that right hand turn should be open at all times. That should never close. Okay. It had nothing to do with the constant getting out. It was prior to that while concert was you know 4:30, 5 o'clock. That's even six o'clock. More curious to be honest at that point. That's it's it's not part of it when it is getting crazy. So it shouldn't be it then. Anyone else? No problem. Just one question. Grandma. I, I know you always have police details at the exits and entrance. Yes. Will there be a police detail to make sure you don't have people taking lefts? Absolutely. Absolutely. There'll be an officer there. There's, again, signage everywhere. Uh, as part of the effort to get them through, what I want them is in a single queue. Uh, we, we found the traffic, particularly on 140, it works really well if we get them queued and don't let the, the drivers, all due respect to our drivers, think. Just put them in a lane, let them go. They tend to go much better. Uh, our goal on our neighbor's property is we're actually going to add a, a tremendous amount of, of traffic equipment on the night of to keep them pinched in. That lot's pretty wide. It could wind up being a little bit of chaos there. There's going to be one lane. There's nowhere to turn, nowhere to stop, nowhere to do anything. One lane out, officer at the end, turn in your right. Thank you. Anyone else? Read in the paper the other day you're going to do you're going to do a repeat of something we used to do over there. You want to tell us about that? <laughs> uh, we're working through the details on that right now. Uh, it's uh, MMAS is looking to bring back the Fourth of July celebration. Um, they've been a great neighbor. We're thrilled to have them across the street. There's still a couple details we have to work through with that, so uh, I'd rather not go too too okay. deep into that yet. That was, um, but if we can if we can pull that off with them, they've been a great neighbor to us. And um, my goal is to try to have some more community programming here as well. Uh, I've got a couple slots. I don't want to let anything out of the bag yet in case it doesn't happen. But I do have some nights where I'd like to focus on the Mansfield and Norton residents and let them use the center in a different way. Hmm. That's good. That's great. We still use the uh, facility for graduation? Yes. I, I will. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. I will tell you, one of my, I say it every year, one of my favorite events. Uh, one night, we've got huge rock stars up there, and the very next night, we've got students graduating, and it's a great feeling to see them up there, and it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Very good. Thank, Thank you for that. Absolutely. Yeah, we all high school graduation happened both in the um, graduation there at your place since 2001. Yeah. And you just moved from the North High School in Chicago because mm -hmm. there were complaints that it was too crowded. Plenty of room there now. Anyone oh, and that, you know, it, it really is one of the really nice benefits. I go back to 100 years ago when I graduated, you, you were limited the number of yeah. tickets. And what I love is even with bad weather, we've got 7,000 covered seats. Yeah. So yeah. Bring, bring the whole family. We're happy yeah. to have you. Yeah. Yeah. And then some. Anything else? So uh, let's try this new tra traffic plan. I mean, we, I appreciate you. We have to keep trying stuff to make sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, find out what works and what doesn't work. But we do appreciate you. And I, I appreciate the help. I'm, I'm here. Please reach out, call. Uh, again, I'm happy to give my cell phone to everybody here. If there's something the night of, don't wait till the next day. I'd be happy to try to tackle it right away. Okay. Um, we we want to be a good neighbor best we can. So let me appreciate know. it. Have a good season. Thanks for your time, Thank guys. You so Thank you. Right. Thank you. Appreciate it. I wish you well. Okay. Next, we have Millie Garcia Serrano, and Mark Dake is here from the Mass DEP to talk about the ALI capping presentation. Folks, want to come on up? When they're, if you'd like to use them. Uh, as, as Mark comes up, if I could just remind everyone, like a year and a half ago, we last talked about this and everything kind of quieted down. Um, at that time, we had, um, uh, ironed out the truck route, the way things were going to be mixed, um, what materials were going to be used on the landfill, um, and now um, things are coming back um, and uh, they're looking to get moving again. And so Mark has a PowerPoint presentation to refresh us on where we were and why, why it has to be done and where we're going. <laughs> We thank you for coming tonight to give us an update because I know you, you, you met with the uh, city council over in Attleboro, and we just want to make sure we have answers to any questions that might arise on our, on our behalf and let the people know it and get an idea of what we're talking about at the same time. Um, very important project. We understand that. Uh, we, I do have one question maybe you could address, Mr. Eunice. Is, you know, we, the thing kind of fell apart after a while. We weren't hearing anything else about ALI. So we went ahead and appropriated money for Union Street, Union Road, to actually pave it, yes. to put a Band-Aid on it for the time being. And I know part of the original agreement was we were going to pave it to get the trucks out of there, and then once we're done with that, we're going to go back and do some more restoration on the, on the street. Have we worked out any kind? I know we went ahead and did it. Is that going to be covered? or what's um, the Mr. Cummings said that he would reimburse us for the payment we're doing now, we've done, going to do now, or have done, and then after the project <coughs> is over, they will be responsible for redoing the road. Okay, so we're going to get reimbursed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, go ahead, make your present. <laughs> I believe that mic works, right? Yeah. Okay, you're all set. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mark Dakers. I'm the Solid Waste Section Chief for Mass DEP, Southeast Regional Office. I thank the invitation to speak at tonight's meeting. I am here, as you said, to update the board on the status of the proposal for the closure of Phase B of the Attleboro landfill located off Peckham Street. The closure has been the closure proposal has been submitted to close the landfill in accordance with Massachusetts solid waste regulations. The owner of the Attleboro landfill has submitted to Mass DEP a revised conceptual closure plan uh, prepared by EnviroCycle LLC to close and cap the inactive landfill, known as Phase B. Um, under Mass DEP's revised guidelines for closing landfills. Phase B of this landfill is one of many inactive landfills and dumping grounds that ceased operations that were never properly closed and capped in accordance with the solid waste regulations. These landfills have the potential to create adverse impacts to public health, safety, and the environment, primarily through the generation of leachate. Can you speak up a little bit, please? Yes. Um, the main concern with unlined landfills is the generation of leachate and its effect on the surrounding environment, including groundwater, surface water, and wetlands. Um, leachate is generated um, with rainwater, falls on the, in the waste, percolates through the waste, comes out through the bottom, picks up contaminants, 
gets into the groundwater, then the groundwater discharges to surface water or wetlands or continues to move and can eventually affect public or private water supply wells if they happen to be located down gradient. Um, properly capping, often referred to as closing an online landfill, significantly reduces the leachate generation up to 99% and the associated impacts to surface water and wetlands are controlled. This closure proposal uh, minimizes the amount of material needed to cap the landfill and it provides funding for capping the phase B area, the 10 acres, as well as um, community mitigation funds for Attleboro and Norton. Um, this landfill needs to be closed. Um, tonight, I'll present the summary of the Attleboro landfill history, the solid waste regulations that apply, uh, the revisions to the closure plan based on the public comments that were received from Attleboro and Norton residents, and the next steps in the process to close and cap the landfill, including an additional opportunity for public comment. The Attleboro landfill is on a 55-acre parcel that was used for solid waste disposal since the early 1940s. The city of Attleboro operated as an open dump on the property from 1940 to approximately 1975. From 1975 to 1995, Attleboro Landfill Inc. operated a landfill on 32 of the 55 acres. That's called Phase A. The unlined Phase A portion has been capped and closed properly. Um, capping of the Phase B area was subject to a consent order. Um, with the department that was executed in, in September 2001 um, and they were required to cap by October 2002. ALI failed to cap phase B. In response, Mass DEP in 2005 issued a unilateral administrative order and a penalty to, to ALI to comply with the solid waste landfill regulations. ALI appealed that. Um, the appeal has been stayed for some time while the parties have attempted to resolve this case, uh, which include the proper closure of phase B and a funding mechanism for the closure. The owner has stated they do not have the capability to pay for the closure. After review of its corporate's records, Mass Deep has determined there were insufficient corporate funds to close and cap the phase B area. The remaining funds were best directed to maintaining phase A and continued groundwater monitoring. This is a diagram of phase A and B. Phase A um, is the larger portion in the front near Peckham Street. It is 32 acres, about a 106 foot mound. Uh, behind it, there's a red area. That is the phase B area that's gonna be capped. The proposal is about a 36 foot mound behind it. Um, and on one side is wetlands, on the other side, is uh, the ship pack um, site. And tonight I'll be talking um, several times about a landfill final cover system. And this graphic depicts that. Um, from bottom to top, we have the material that they're proposing to bring into the landfill, which is construction and demolition debris fines, which is basically after you pull out all the recyclable material out of construction and demolition material, so you knock down your house um, or do a renovation, they recycle everything they can, the metal, the wood, um, any cardboard, any materials that they can, the gypsum wallboard if it's clean, and the remaining material uh, is this construction and demolition debris fine. Um, that is proposed to be mixed with concrete, and that would be the material that would be placed over the existing landfill that's out there at a 5% grade, solid waste regulations require a 5% grade. And then above that, you would have um, our, our basically our six inch subgrade sand layer. That is our gas venting layer to collect gas and provide support for the membrane. The membrane is a 40 mil textured membrane. You think of it as just a really strong plastic. That's the key component of a final cover system. Above that is a 12 inch sand drainage layer. That's to collect the storm water um, that falls onto the landfill and divert it and to keep it clean. And above that, you put the 12 inch vegetative support layer, which maintains and prevents erosion and um, gives a good grass surface for low maintenance um, for the future. Can I interrupt you for a second on the, uh, the actual content? So the material that's being recycled is mostly building materials, but there's no hazardous material involved. Like it would be no asbestos or anything like that. All the facilities, that handle construction and demolition debris material have permits through Mass DEP. 
They have hazardous waste um, contingency plans. They have um, asbestos contingency plans. They have, um, so they have people that are trained inspectors to look for these materials. In addition to it, the construction and demolition debris material, if they want to, re they want to, a lot of this material is reused at landfills as alternative daily cover. Instead of using clean sand, they use this material as cover at lined landfills, like Taunton landfill that's operating, they use it there. In order to use that, they have to get something called a beneficial use determination. Those beneficial, and they're issued through the department. Um, I do those reviews in Boston, also our office does those reviews. They require testing for a wide list of parameters to make sure there is no hazardous levels of any contaminant. Anything that would be hazardous, they cannot send it to this landfill. It's a solid, we allow th those materials only to go to solid waste landfills. Hazardous waste has to go to hazardous waste landfills. Thank you. <clears throat> um, from 2004 to 2012, there was um, a myriad of closure proposals. Um, over a nine-year period, NCAP was a developer, um, several proposals, and held community informational sessions in Norton and Attleboro. Um, they were met with significant opposition, primarily due to concerns with potential impacts from the number of trucks to bring in the proposed volume of soils and construction and demolition material to be used for grading and shaping. Some of the previous proposals was not only construction and demolition material, it was using contaminated soils mixed with the construction and demolition material. Um, the last proposal from NCAP was in 2012. Um, it was 650,000 cubic yards or approximately 1 million tons of material to shape and grade the material. Bring up phase B was going to be 80 feet high above existing gates. The current proposal is um, 36 feet, and I'll get into more in those details. Um, now, the current proposal, it came to public information back in 2014 is when the department um, had this come to us. It was um, to close the remaining unlined portion of phase B at a minimum 5% grade. And when I, and the Mass DEP's regulations specify that the final cover system or cap has to be at a slope not less than 5%. We don't want it flat. We want a slope to have, get proper drainage of surface water and prevent ponding of water on the final cover system. Ponding of water on the cap increases the amount of water that will get through. That, that membrane is very low permeability water will not go through it but if it's flat you put water on there it some will get through it works best when it's at five percent and it reduces the leachate production um, it would provide funding and long-term maintenance for the entire landfill phase a and b and facilitate post closure future use for solar solar is not part of this proposal but by doing it five percent um, angled to the south <coughs> that is that that's what solar developers will want that it, to them is it something you can build on. They would much prefer a 5% slope than a three to one slope. As you see, most of phase A slopes are three to one. Only the top area is really feasible for solar. Um, the December 2000 proposal was for 201,000 cubic yards of construction and demolition material mixed with concrete um, to shape the landfill. The maximum height of phase B was gonna be 30 feet above existing grades. The maximum height of phase A is about 106 feet. Um, to give you some relative, approximately 9,100 tr truck trips were going to be needed to bring in the construction and demolition material to the site. Um, the average number of truck trips was going to be 15 trucks a day, six days a week for two years. The final cover construction was going to take six months and would generate an additional 2,900 truck trips. Mixing of the concrete and seeing the construction and demolition material would occur outside at the Attleboro landfill and all truck traffic was proposed through Norton. Uh, public information session was held in March 2015, where the proponent presented the information. A 30-day public comment period ensued, and that ended in April. Um, and the proponent and Mass DEP reviewed the public comments on the proposal, and Mass DEP has incorporated the community's concerns and the proponent's response into this briefing. Um, some of the main concerns were air quality impacts, mixing at landfill and dust from transport. The concerns from the community were mixing of C&D construction and demolition material fines with cement and water will pose a risk to the public from dust. Dust from construction and demolition fine transport will pose a risk to the public on its way to the site. The response was that mixing at the site was eliminated in response to comments. 
all mixing of the construction and demolition fines and the water to be will be implemented at a permitted construction and demolition debris site in New Bedford. Um, construction and demolition fines will be shipped pre-mixed with concrete wet in covered trucks, no dust. The, uh, the full trucks are coming through the city of Attleboro, right? Yes, and I'll get yeah. into the traffic roads, roads that, and that's the next Getting slide. Ahead of you, I'm sorry. Yep. So the, the, a lot of comments were on basically what we call traffic or public welfare impacts, noise, dust, vehicle emissions, and safety. There was comments were that the volumes in, of shaping and grading material, the concrete and the construction and demolition to fines was too large, um, and the distribution of traffic impacts was not equitable. All the traffic through Norton was unfair. Attleboro should bear some of the burden. Uh, road integrity not acceptable. Union Road with Norton was narrow and in need of repair. Response, the amount of truck trips with the delivery of the concrete and, and um, construction demolition be fine is reduced to approximately 6,570 truck trips from 9,130. Um, that's essentially because of the change in the material. Instead of sending 100-yard trailers that can carry 22 tons, you're going to send trucks that can carry construction and the mixed material that can handle 35 tons. So you're, you, you're sending more per truck, um, and that reduces the number of truck trips. Um, this is roughly one-sixth of the amount of truck trips that would happen um, if you, from the 2012 proposal. Um, also, the amount of traffic that is less than if actually if you brought in clean soil, if you took 140,000 yards of soil, which is the bare minimum amount you could take and get a 5% grade out there. Because soil weighs so much more, 1.6 tons per cubic yard versus the, this mixture is one ton per cubic yard. That's why you would actually t take more trucks to bring clean sand. And if you brought in clean sand, you would not have a revenue base, you would have to pay for it. So it would actually, it would cost a small fortune to cap. Um, the revised proposal is for five days a week rather than six days for two years. That works out to about 15 to 18 trailers per day. Um, the 2012 proposal was 35 to 38 truck trips per day. Um, based on feedback from both communities, traffic will come in through Attleboro, so the full trucks in through Attleboro and out through Norton. Uh, proposal to use one construction and demolition facility allows the scheduling of trucks not typically available to other projects. This is unusual. Most of these come from multiple facilities or multiple soils projects. We usually never have one. This is the only one I'm aware of. Um, they can avoid the busiest time of the day and potentially school bus pickup and drop off times, which was one of the uh, co significant comments people wanted to do. Um, and I, as you mentioned, as I understand, the town is in the process of paving Union Road. In the original proposal, the proponent agreed to reconstruct the road base and pave Union Road construction. That's still part of the mitigation plan. Um, and as well as additional mitigation, which I'll discuss in a couple minutes. So this is just a big picture view of the traffic route. Um, the material would generate, would come out of New Bedford Waste Services in New Bedford, um, travel west on 195 to Route 118, travel onto 118 into Attleboro, turn right onto Bishop, turn right onto Pike, turn left onto Peckham Street to the site. This is all in Attleboro. Um, then they would unload. The empty trucks would then make, um, would travel easterly on Peckham, which turns into Union Road and Norton, turn right onto South Worcester Street, which merged with um, John Scott Boulevard, which turns into Eddy Street, right under Route 140, left onto Harvey Street, which runs through the Taunton Industrial Park, left under Bay Road to 495, and then down Route 24 back to New Bedford. Um, I've driven the roads. I drove every traffic route at least a couple times, not recently, but in the last couple of years, looking at every route and looking at where there were problems. Other communities' concern was that recreate, that's what the developer, the proponent calls this material. Um, it's construction and demolition refines mixed with cement. That's what the department considers it. And I want to be clear that the department doesn't endorse companies or products. That's not what we do. We just evaluate whether material is acceptable for the proposed use or project. And we've determined it's acceptable, which 
for this project. Um, comments were the use of recrete is experimental and has not been implemented in any mass landfill or any other landfill. Um, response, some commenters interpreted the proposal that the recrete, the, the cons which was, looks like cement, uh, cement when it sets up, was it replacing the final cover system, which I showed before. That is not the case. It will all be below that final cover system. Um, construction and demolition debris finds, which are the significant component of the material that's going to be used in the landfill, are currently being used as alternative daily cover at line landfills now and have been successfully used in a couple of online landfill projects in the southeast region. Marion and Stoughton both closed and capped with construction and demolition debris finds and contaminated soils and did not have it. <coughs> Cement has been used for centuries as a building material. Uh, the recrete is just a mixture of these two materials with known properties. Um, typically, C and D fines would be mixed with contaminated soils, but in this case, the construction and demolition debris fines are going to be mixed with cement, a product that is in everyday construction. Hydrogen sulfide production. Some commenters were concerned that the construction and demolition of waste would generate hydrogen sulfide gas during the closure. Short-term testing on recrete revealed no hydrogen sulfide production. The microorganisms that are responsible for generating hydrogen sulfide require the following to, to produce it. They require a sulfate source. Gypsum, a component of drywall, is there, so there is a sulfate source. And they also require a carbon source, organic material. There is organic material in construction demolition refines. They require anaerobic conditions without oxygen and moisture. The organic material in concrete is physically bound up in the concrete mixture and not available for the bacteria. The studies in the literature have shown that mixing of concrete alone with the construction and demolition material um, retards hydrogen sulfide production. Additionally, concrete is alkaline and is not that permeable to water. The conceptual closure plan additionally has a contingency plan for installing an active gas system to address any potential gas production should it occur, and Mass DEP is requiring that a financial assurance mechanism, a bond for the active gas system, be put in place before they start. That's in addition to a bond for the entire closure of the cap, the 10 acres, uh, that will also be required. That is the part of the department's policy that any site that wants to take construction and demolition debris um, fines has to have um, a, a contingency plan for a gas system. We have not had to use it, but they have to have it. Um, other comments were that, that phase B of the landfill doesn't pose any immediate threat, and therefore, why were we doing anything about this? Um, commenters stated that phase B modern has not detected any conditions that present immediate threat, therefore no remediation at this time, and people were concerned that the project increases the risk from a site that doesn't pose a risk. Response, we agree that there is no imminent hazard. There's nothing that requires an immediate action to protect public health and safety. There's nothing atypical about the environmental monitoring results associated with this landfill. No site conditions justify a unique response to close this landfill. This landfill is not in compliance with the solid waste regulations that require it that be capped with a standard final cover system. The landfill needs to be capped. The documented risks with uncapped, unlined landfills include leachate, which I discussed before. Um, the, also, the other risks associated is stormwater runoff into surface water and wetlands. Stormwater running over exposed waste on the landfill can contaminate surface water and sediments along the banks and bottoms of waterways and wetland resources. The landfill is located adjacent to wetlands at this location. The solid waste is not covered and there are no stormwater structures or controls to prevent future impacts in phase B. Another documented risk with uncapped landfills exposure to waste. The solid waste within the footprint is not covered in B. People and animals can contact the exposed waste within the footprint in the and throughout the property can be directly exposed to contamination. Um, some commenters stated that the project risks, the project increases risk from a site that doesn't pose a risk. Um, and this is, some of the comments here are DEP summarizing the response from the proponent. This is DEP's response because this has to do with our policies. Uh, Mass DEP's policies for the reuse of soils and construction and demolition material are set to use the reuse of these soils at landfills and operations while protecting any residents who live nearby. We're very conservative risk assessment and risk management process to confirm the concentrations and the nature of the contaminants that are in there 
and determine what is acceptable concentrations in the soils and other soil-like materials that can be reused as cover and contour material in landfills like this project. Um, the project will provide a financial assurance mechanism with post-closure monitoring maintenance for Phase A in addition to Phase B. So we'll have long-term 30-year monitoring for both. Without continued monitoring, Phase A may become, and continued maintenance really for Phase A, may become more of an environmental concern than Phase B in the future. The town of um, Norton in its landfill um, is an example. They had a few years ago had some um, maintenance issues that they needed to address. Um, and it, the town came forward and fixed those and repaired them and it facilitated solar. Um, but the difference between the town of Norton and this one is that the town of Norton did it quickly and uh, successfully and this proponent we've had to order and that's why we're here. Um, so after public comments, what has changed? The mixing of the concrete and the CND materials will not occur at the landfill. It'll occur at a mass DEP permitted construction and demolition material in New Bedford. Proposed traffic routes are through Attleboro and Norton. Um, truck traffic and these routes can change based on specific events. There's a traffic management plan um, that can vary depending on events and depending on input from both towns during the project. That was <coughs> the purpose of some previous meetings we had. The volume of the project has increased by 30,000 cubic yards to an estimated 231,000 cubic yards um, to generate additional mitigation funds requested by the town and city. Originally, all the traffic was through Norton. Attleboro was not getting any mitigation for any road repair. Um, as part of some of the truck traffic going, half of it going through, coming in through Attleboro, there is additional mitigation. And that's the only reason for the increase. The schedule has been revised from six days a week to five days a week. Weekends have been eliminated. The number of truck trips has been reduced from 9,100 to 6,570. Um, it's, it's basically the same number per day, 15 to 18. The department was very conservative in that estimate. If you figure out 35 tons over the number of working days, and we estimate about 400 working days, um, you really only need 13 truck trips a day, but that doesn't take into account weather, holidays, um, and um, other events that, you know, the availability of the material, um, you have to build in some contingency. So we, we, we estimate about 400 working days, but we're saying two years. Um, the maximum height of the site is increased by four to six feet. That's to get that additional 30,000 yards to pay for mitigation, which I'll talk about in a, a minute. Mitigation. The site sits on, as we know, right on the town line, as a lot of landfills um, were originally sited. Um, a dollar per ton, or approximately $231,000, split between the city and town, was $115,500 each. Then there's a roadway, sorry, roadway repair fund for the city of Attleboro, $300,000 for funds for repaving 8,500 linear feet of Bishop, Pike, and Peckham. Those are the primary roads that would be affected. In the town of North, $125,000 for funds for repaving 4,000 feet of Union. It's from the facility out to basically to South Worcester. Additionally, prior to starting the project, there would be some limited patching and some limited grinding and overlay to correct surfaces that represent significant noise sources. Um, with the town going ahead and doing part of Union Road, some a lot of that, where a lot of that work was proposed, that's going to already be done. Next steps, Mass DEP has determined that the revised closure proposal complies with its policy <coughs> and may proceed to the next step in the process, which is solid waste permitting. Mass DEP will post the response to comments on its webpage, will execute an administrative consent order with the owner and EnviroCycle with a schedule for normal solid waste permitting and closure, which will provide the communities with additional opportunities for public comment. There will be an initial site assessment and a comprehensive site assessment scope of work. We'll have some additional monitoring wells, some surface water, some sediment samples collected during the project to gather more information on phase B impacts. Um, then there will be a corrective action design report, which is basically engineered stamp plan <coughs> for all the grades, all the storm water controls, all the dust controls that you would have for the trucks, the cleaning, the wheel washing. 
all the details that people wanted to see. The previous plan is conceptual. This one, the conceptual plan, this is, will have details, stamped engineered plans. There will be a 21-day public comment period. Department will issue a draft decision after its review. People will get to comment on that draft decision. The department will review that, and then based on those comments, we'll either approve as is, we'll modify it, or we'll deny it. Those are our three options. Um, and the last slide is my contact information and um, link to MassDEP's webpage on this project, as well as the policy that we're operating under this project and projects like it. And if you want, I'll take any questions anyone has. Yeah, I think you know. I think you've addressed most of the issues that we've. I know we've talked about in the past here, and I appreciate the fact you guys have listened and, and taken some of that information in, into account. Um, personally, I, I've said this before. You know, the engineers are originally involved in this project. I had absolutely no trust in, or uh, uh, it was not reliable. I, I found them to be uh, uh, pretty pretty slick at times. So um, I'm, I'm glad the DEP has got more involved in it. And I'm confident based on the, you know, just on the history of working with the DEP and the EPA at the SPAC and the great job you guys did out there to clean that up, I'm, I'm, <coughs> I'm confident that this will be done the same way and that'll, that'll be taken care of. My one concern I've always had is we're using taxpayers' money. I'm not ours. We're using everybody's money to um, cap this private landfill because the uh, owner of the property supposedly doesn't have the money available to do it him, him, himself. I, do we have restrictions? Do we have a plan in place to make sure that any future uh, profits from the pr property will not go to the landowner, that we have somehow have some control over that? In the response to comments, the proponent, as they are written now, take one step back when the department gets one of these projects you have to determine the part of the policy is to say you need enough money to pay for the final cover system so we go through a pretty rigorous evaluation of looking at what materials getting they're getting generating for revenue what it costs the cap which we have a very good idea since we do this very often um, and then looking at operational costs which becomes a little bit harder and that varies with time plus looking at how the materials that they're <coughs> using their costs fluctuate so we try to build it so that there's very little that someone is not going to make a killing doing these projects. They're allowed to make a profit. We're, you know, they're five to eight, five to ten percent is the typical profit that the developer, the proponent is making, the per people with the equipment and the work. Um, they've said in their proposal that no money is going to the owner um, as part of the response to comments. They, um, in the, there's discussion about the solar, um, about in the future that the if they do solar it's not part of this project but there has i've received calls people wanting to know and i've said it's not in compliance we cannot talk about that yet um, but if they do that then there may be some discussion about where revenue could go with the city or other alternatives or off takers but that is in the response to comments and i think that's um, something that certainly could happen yeah i think and that's that was where i was going with this because we we put solar on our own land landfill and it became very profitable for us. And I'm, I'm again, we're, 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 we're all paying the nut on this. You know, I don't think it's, it's the right thing to do would be for the uh, pre present owner to benefit any, uh, reap any kind of benefit. Current response from to comments says he's going to forfeit those comments. That's what it, the <coughs> document I have in front of me says right now. That is okay. not something the department is, that's what he says they're going to do. Um, there, there would have to be agreements between those parties. The department doesn't decide who gets to make money or not, but we do require that as part of this project that there's 30 years of monitoring and maintenance um, funds for phase A and B so that the, um, the state or the taxpayers don't have to pick up the cost for that. That comes as part of the project here. Um, we're not asking, you, you do have to, there is no way around it. There is impacts to the community that we understand. Uh, but we um, are trying to make sure that the environmental impacts in the future by having these what we call financial assurance mechanisms, a $2 million bond for the closure and a half a million dollar bond 
for post closure will say that we have money so this w it won't be a problem in the future and can maintain it for at least 30 years, which is what our regulations say has to happen yeah. at a minimum. Okay, and I appreciate you being uh, honest and candid with us. I mean, I, as long as I'm sitting in a position where I can make some kind of decision, I'll assure you that if any opportunity comes up where there's a proposal to create any kind of a funding mechanism over there for the owner of the property, whether it be solar or whatever options that might be available, um, I would encourage my town to take very strong action against that because of the years and years of neglect and you know nonsense that we've had to put up with because of that landfill. So I, I, uh, I've always had a very big concern about people making money off us. And obviously, as long as I'm around and available, I'll, I'll make sure that uh, we, we keep an eye on that part of the part of the project. Uh, the dust that I know I know this comes in as sealed, it's concrete. Bob probably knows this better than any of us. He, he's in the concrete business, but you know when you lay that stuff down, it dries. It creates a powdery yes, substance. Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, they're going to have to take steps. Just if this was just soil and it was coming in clean soil and it was a construction site, you have to use best management practices for controlling dust. They'll have to do the same. All the details will be in the corrective action design. They have to have all that laid out. And <coughs> they'll have to have a professional engineer stamp those plans and a professional engineer oversee the construction. It will not be the proponent. It will be someone else. He's not going to be here. It has to be a Massachusetts professional engineer, and the department will inspect. They can't have dust go off site. That's the standard in our air quality regulations and the solid waste regulations. Thank you. And we're getting questions, Mr. Paul. <coughs> I'm sure you've probably told us, but under Phase B, is there any kind of uh, hazardous materials that we're capping? Well, we have. We know it was a burn dump. Um, we know. I know from closing a lot of burn dumps and seeing lots of testing, and you can look on and Google it yourself and look at what the typical contaminants are in burn dumps. Usually it's lead. When you burn materials, um, lead is not going to burn away. Um, a lot of the volatiles do burn away, but the heavy metals do not. So um, we don't, when we, we have lots of data on landfills. Like when we closed like the Taunton landfill, we don't go test the, the, the waste in the landfill. We put monitoring wells around it and we know how to keep what's in the landfill from getting out. The same idea, we know what's typically in a, in a landfill and we do have monitoring wells around phase A and portions of phase B. We don't have a complete network. Um, so we, we, I know what's coming out of phase A and some of it is from phase B. Can I distinguish what's from what? I, I can't right now. The last groundwater data showed arsenic and vinyl chloride exceeding drinking water standards. Um, not levels that would require any immediate action, but they are what you would typically expect for a landfill like this. <coughs> so Mass DEP is pretty confident that maybe Texas Instruments or Minnesota Control at the time didn't dump similar uh, waste into the old based on the information that we had it you know the ship pack closure and all the investigations there no will we okay. look at is is they relocate waste and look at that yeah we will we'll work with we cannot interfere with the ship pack closure they have their own restrictions on that and we won't we won't interfere with that closure uh, but we do we'll look for we'll take sediment samples we'll take surface water samples we'll <coughs> look for all the things we always look for heavy metals pcbs um and um pesticides herbicides those are all the things that we look for that were maybe you, you know could have been disposed here and if they're in the sediments or in the wetlands then we'll address that then but we don't what we don't know is we don't know okay um another question you probably don't might not know and maybe Bob does but to me I would think a truck similar to like a large dump truck carrying mixed concrete riding from New Bedford is going to separate on the right up I think it's not really it's going to get mixed on site it's just no it's it's going to be mixed in no. New Bedford it's going to be mixed in New Bedford um, there'll be a permit for the equipment 
at that facility they can't put it in it's a permitted facility so they need a permit from the southeast regional office to mix <coughs> the they're going it's to not getting mixed there like they no they know. that was one of the a lot of the community's concerns were about dust and about bringing those materials in so it's going to get mixed the one thing they have to do is they'll have to mix it and get it to the facility before it hardens if they don't do that then yeah. they have a lot of expenses correct so it's, it's coming in a mixer it's no. coming in mixed no it will be no, no, no. it is not your typical cement this is six to eight percent cement it's coming in a trailer though yeah an end mixed. Dump. yep and dump mixed. really yep love to see it <laughs> serious i would think that yep. if you were to put concrete in the back of your they, dump truck it's going to separate on the way here absolutely the vibration oh. um is going to separate has it ever been done anywhere else um the proponent has an approval in pennsylvania to do a coal facility I, I'm, the, I'm just telling you for experience yep. of 31 years because it's going to separate by the time it gets to norton what happens on site then the material doesn't meet spec it can't go down it goes back i guarantee you the first load will not meet spec that's why you can't, I have you can't take concrete mix it in a dump trailer first of all it has to be lying number one because you're going to have leakage right. from because it has to be mixed with water correct i guess they I have to only wait to see this i never even i never heard of anybody ever doing that in my life now they're not, not they, just part of the country the mixing is going to go on at a facility so we'll get to see how that the, the equipment is hasn't been bought yet they're not going to i think buy the equipment until they have everything in place um, but they will mix it at a, at a facility and six to eight percent concrete and it's got to meet spec so be, what do they spread it with when it comes to the facility on that landfill they have a machine that spreads it they're going to have to use different machines to spread it you're right they haven't done something like this on this scale I mean, they have to, not a, safely to come here sir it has to come in a four inch slump which is very thick it's not loose because if it's wet it's going to be splashing over the sides it's going to come out the tailgates it's going to be a complete no, I, mess yep so we've if had, it comes in a four inch slump which is stiff you need to spread it with something other than a shovel or <laughs> you can't move it it needs to be a, a laser screed or some something of that nature and we'll, we'd love to see your comments on the corrective action design absolutely if someone I, with that expertise would be would be helpful if i may when sure. they when they uh forward to you the type of machinery that's going to be used to mix the uh, product in New Bedford, mm -hmm. you forward that to us just out of curiosity. Oh yeah, we'll post the application electronically on our webpage, and so that everyone can get it. You don't have to wait for our decision. You can comment on it immediately and look at it. Yeah, no, I, I just didn't know you had said it hadn't been purchased yet, and oh no, I the equipment for mixing. That's, that's what I mean. That's well, I know I because they need an approval from DEP solid waste to put the equipment in that building I, I understand that and that's what I'm just saying I'd be interested in seeing oh that how, equipment how they're going to do how it. they're going to mix it there yeah okay yep that's some yep and, I can do that and while I'm while I have it on my mind I know you spoke of the uh, 21 day period for public uh, comment mm -hmm. that's after you that hasn't started yet you no. they have to submit the permit to us we have to review the permit and we'll have questions. We'll go back and forth with them on technical questions. There's no one who submits a permit to us on a capping of this size, 10 acres, that we're not going to have questions. No one's going to get it perfect. Or there's just things we need to not assume um, and have details. And then after we go back and forth with our comments, then when we feel it meets all our requirements, we'll issue a or if they don't make our requirements, we issue a draft decision approving it or draft decision denying it. Right. And then that comment, that actual letter that we've issued, people get to review that department permit with all the conditions that we would put on, inspections, engineering, everything. And that way, you're not looking at a blank document that you're like, well, what is the department going to require and not require? You get to see what we're going to require. Right. And comment on the conditions if you don't like them. You, don't, you can comment on the and provide input. Okay. It's just that I want. To, is that something you'll send to us, or we have to look someplace special? For well, it? with the, no, well, it would be. We would post it on our web page, and we certainly would send it out to all the people that we got public comments. We kind of okay. like send it out as a blank, and we would send it to the towns. Any department decision that solid waste issues, which I sign, they go to the board of health in every town. Okay, I just and want. This, I just want to make sure the people who have concerns will oh, know when that twenty-one day 
uh, time period? Everything will be on our web page and emails will go out so that everyone knows that they're okay. there. Okay, and I'm on a roll now. Okay. <laughs> you had mentioned about uh, how you, you are you using you're using larger trucks to carry a larger volume a larger well, weight. They were going to use 100-yard trailers to carry the construction and demolition debris fines. That tends to be a very light material, and that's how they would pack it, and it, would be, it was going to be mixed on the site. So they're, they're not going to be, that material is going to get mixed in New Bedford Waste Services in New Bedford. So now it's coming in a different form. It's going to be, as you say, a, a wet mixture. Mm -hmm. You're only allowed to carry 34 tons in a trailer dump, so at the most, so whatever they're permitted for. Right, and so you were going from the maximum you'd probably put in the, the 100 yarders is about 22 tons, and the maximum you're going to be able to put under the new proposal is 35. You'd never get 35, so that's why we didn't go with 13 trucks per day. We went with 15 to 18, just knowing, and we built in, you know, two years, there's 400 days. There'll be some things that they'll have to work out on the truck trips. Like, for one thing, they know if they don't ship it there fast, in a, within a time frame, they miss it, a truck breaks down, they're gonna have a very expensive problem that they're gonna have to eat. Not, the department will have a $2 million financial assurance mechanism in place, whether they succeed or not. That is department's money to use if they do not perform, So finish it. So basically it's the same volume truck, it's just that it's gonna be weighing more because it's liquid yes. instead of, okay. Just because it changes trucks and it changes the material. Those 100-yard trailers will be going to the New Bedford Waste Services instead of coming to Attleboro. That'll be, that's the difference, really. Okay, thank you. So, yes, um, so, so I'm assuming we're, we're gonna have an engineer on site testing the first load if, um, if it The material come. will get tested at the, before it leaves the site, okay. and then it should get, needs to get tested when it gets to the site. Correct, so if it, is there a special consistency that this mixture should be prior to receiving to the landfill. I'm sure there has to be. They're gonna spec it out for us, the yeah. different percentages. They've been doing mixing and tests over the years that this has been going on, and they will yeah. give us a spec and we will look at it. Well, I get back to my separation issue. It's just, it's just common nature. Vibration separates water, solids. You know, you, you know. I know that with dredge. If you take so, dredge material, shock sensitive material, you put it in a trailer and you hit the brakes and all of a sudden it liquefies and all the water pours out. Yes, correct. I know exactly what you're talking about. So I, that's why I'm asking the question, does it have to meet a certain spec when it gets delivered? They'll have a it's spec mean. they have to meet at the site and when it's place it. And that's, I want to make sure that they're doing that because that's what we're approving. Yep. So that's we why in a mixer it constantly mixes while you get yep. there. You don't get the separation. I hate separation, so <laughs> it's one of my biggest pet peeves. But, okay. No, if they have to, if it, if they can't meet the spec, they're going to have to change how they're doing it. Got it, Mr. Flaherty. So, are we going to have a determination as to the viability of the time to travel from New Bedford to North or to to the site to make sure that the, like you said, they're going to have to. Um, uh, they'll be encumbered by an expense should should it solidify before they get to the site. My concern is we're going to have 15 to 18 trucks a day barreling through Norton and Attleboro, trying to make sure that they get there before it solidifies with the with any traffic congestion, with any uh, change in temperature, with any uh, anything that's going to cause this to happen um, and be a public nuisance to the roads and to the mm -hmm. to the neighborhoods around. They're going to have to mix it so that they can get it there and they have a lot of leeway. Their current traffic plan is that they, from as soon as they turn off the state highway onto, um, I'm trying to remember, I think it's Bishop in Attleboro, they got to go 20 miles an hour down that entire road all the way to the facility. When they leave the site, they got to go 20 miles an hour until they get off Union Road and then they leave. That's the traffic management plan right now, 20 miles an hour. And they're going to put, um, uh, the proposal has cameras at the project to to watch stuff go in and out, and they have fines they'll built into the traffic management plan that if they don't follow it, then they pay fines. That's going to be between, you know, that would be between the city of Attleboro and their police department, and in the town and Norton and their police department. The department is not going to get into um, fining people over. We don't police the roads. 
Uh, on. We will require that they follow the traffic management plan, which is part of what one of the documents when we do the response to comments, they have a separate management plan that they sat down with some of the town departments. They have to abide by it. Yeah, uh, but what, what, what would be the difference between the fines and the damage to the to the trailer should the uh, should the slurry for back of a, lack of a better term solidify in the back of it because most businesses I know would eat the fine to save the uh, you know, penny wise and pound foolish or no, to, to um, being what? there'll be the incentive the consent orders that we typically sign since it's not a public document yet they typically have violations built in there's there's automatic meaning you have limited appeal rights with with them and um, the typical one is either from 500 to a thousand dollars a day for the department for fining parties that do so um, if they are not following the traffic management plan and they are going too fast and we find out that they're not abiding by the times and what they've said the days then that's a violation of the consent order and that could be fine and that's that's what our mitigation is and the department has if they don't perform the project we'll have the financial assurance i mean the, the thing that makes the, the as soon as they sign as soon as we have a consent order in place and the, and they can't take anything until the financial assurance mechanism is in there we have a two million dollar bond whether they finish or not so from my standpoint i look at it that way things just improved whether they perform or not we have two million dollars that we didn't have before and they haven't done anything yet so from my standpoint that's why we have a lot of leverage they have signed a consent order if they don't perform there are penalties they've said they'll follow the traffic management plans they said they'll they'll change them based on the input from both communities and they want to have an ongoing committee to provide input on the traffic management plan for the whole process and they'll change it as things go if they if their mixing doesn't work as they they propose they'll have to change it they can't just decide to make the change and change the traffic plan. They have to come talk to the department or to the towns about managing changing the traffic plan. Really, the towns on the, on the traffic plan. Because that is one of the biggest concerns, and that's what we've spent the most amount of time on, is trying to work on traffic issues. Because it's on, it, they never, it's not on a main highway. It's off a little side road, um, and there's no easy way to get there. And that's really been the impediment for capping the site um, for you know 15 years is that the fact of where it is not what we're trying to do Land, all landfills have to be capped the problem is is getting the material in there to do the capping do you have anything um, just one thing um, the reason that this company's doing it and you're using this material and making uh, the cap is the height that it has to be it's taxpayers dollars aren't paying for this correct it's all no the, what the taxpayers are doing they're having to deal with some of the public welfare issues they're not paying for it and the financial assurance mechanism is a bond put up by a private company that they will put up only the Commonwealth can access so there is no taxpayers dollars they're gonna have mitigation paid for the <coughs> for some of those impacts for the roads the current mitigation is roughly 25% of the project. Um, and that's about as much as the department. I mean, our, we're in the job of closing landfills and capping them. Um, the mitigation can, in this case, it needs to, it seems reasonable given the roads and the impacts in the both communities, but it really can't go any higher because then the project just gets bigger, longer, and that is not really consistent with the department's policy it's again it's the towns aren't supposed to make money either but they can reasonably have um, for their trouble and for their citizens trouble can be compensated at least have the roads um, improve for the people who are most impacted sure. Tom anything Tom do me a favor come on up to the mic identify yourself with my secretary here so she he knows who you know, uh, my name's Tom Stevens. I'm a, a butt up to that property. I got a couple of questions for you. When was the last time you were out there, walked around? Myself? I yeah. have not been on the site for a couple of years. Okay. I got pictures. I was there last night. Uh, that is not something I would recommend. Want to take a look at them? I, These pictures, all right, it's all trees. 
Here's the part where the guy says he can't, he's not getting any revenue. Well, he's storing trailers out there, right? He's generating revenue there. The guy that owns the place. He's got the key to the gate. Mm -hmm. so he's generating revenue. So that's A number one. <clears throat> number two, look at all the trees that are around here. All the trash that's over there is where he's storing those trailers. Better on that side. The side you want to cap is on the other side. That so one of the things we that will. That I'm going to show you. Yep. All right. When you look at these trees, these trees look like they started there a couple of years ago.